Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and the other day, just a couple of days ago, I showed you how I took this image, which was taken in Ireland and I converted it to that image by just really making these autumn colors pop, which was quite an amazing process, I was amazed by myself. Now, this time it's even better, because I dig through a couple of my old images and while autumn colors in trees by themselves are the definition of beauty, right, it's really really awesome, but this time I actually found an image which I took in Utah last year, where I didn't just have the autumn colors, but also, as it just so happened, the amazing mountain scenery just in front of me with the city behind the mountains, which you could see through a valley and the sunset. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this image right here, which was taken about a year ago in autumn in Utah. Now, today I'm going to show you how I took this image and I just developed it ever so slightly by using two softwares, which I'm going to come to in a second. So we took that image from here, like the basic version, and we're going to get it to this particular state in just a couple of minutes. Now, for that image, I'm using two softwares, like in the last couple of tutorials, where first I have to create my HDR image, right? So that's me, that means when I was there, I took three images, which I then combined uh, using a, an HDR software. Now, similar today, we're going to do the same thing using Aurora HDR 2018. You can do it in any other software that you have that can create HDR images, even Lightroom or Photoshop if you're interested. For Photoshop, check hashtag exposure blending. Now, what we're going to do is, in first we're going to start with Aurora, and then once we have that HDR, I'm going to run through, we're going to jump in Photoshop. And then Photoshop, we're going to add just ever so slightly a little bit more of a sunset to the image, and then really pop, make these colors pop and make sure the lighting situation kind of works in the image. So it's a really fast process, looks like a lot, it's like no effort at all. So I'm excited, let's, let's get going with this, let's jump right into the image processing. All right, guys, let's jump right into Aurora HDR 2018. Now, the first thing I did, as usual, I had to drag my three original images, uh, like the zero exposure, the minus two, as well as the plus two, so three of them, and I drag and drop them into Aurora. Now, what it comes up with is a sort of yeah, range of presets that you can select from as you, if you would like to, because you gotta start somewhere, and if that somewhere gets you a certain amount on the way, that's perfect for me. Now, I chose a preset that was called Soft and Airy, right? So I'm not gonna, like, not gonna do it live, I'm just gonna explain you what happened, because it's gonna speed up the process a bit more, now, I use soft and airy, and let's have a quick look as to what exactly that's doing. Now, first of all, if you look, have, a, have a look on the right-hand side here, it does increase the contrast a little bit, and it also adds a bit more what is called HDR Enhance, and that's like clarity in Lightroom or clarity in Photoshop. So if I turn that off and on, you'll see it just adds a lot more, well, clarity to the image. So I'm going to leave it to somewhere like this where it was. Now, the highlights are greatly reduced in this particular preset. So if you look at it, it's like this is how normal highlights would look if I would not touch that particular setting. And no, we're going to have to bring them down because we have some lovely clouds there. And I definitely want to see those, right? We're going to bring up the shadows a little bit. So to something like that, right? Otherwise, it would look like this. And it's a bit too dark for my taste there. So let's bring it up and then increase the whites and decrease the blacks just ever so slightly. Okay, and I don't think there was much more happening with this particular preset except the good old image radiance. If I switch it off, you can see that this looks quite dull, right? It's not, mm, it looks weird. It looks like, a, for me, what I would consider a not super well done HDR image. Now, the image radiance, however, kind of makes the thing, like darkens the dark, uh, dark areas, darkens the, dark, darkens the dark areas and brightens the bright areas a bit. And it also gives it this sort of soft and airy feeling, right? And that's exactly what that preset stands for, I'm gonna assume. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere like here, where the, well, where it was at the beginning. Now, let's go down a bit further. What else happened? There was a little bit of glow. So if I remove that, that's how it looked before. And that's how it looked after, right? So it's just gonna add a little bit of, well, essentially white into the bright areas of our image. So that's totally cool, I'm down with that. And the rest is really negative negligible except the vignette. So let's have a look at the before the vignette and after the vignette. It's really quite remarkably difficult to see actually in this particular case. Let's zoom out a little bit. Maybe like this. Yeah, now we can definitely see it because we're zoomed out. So that is just a bit of a vignette just to draw the attention towards the center of that super mountain here. Now, 
Now we can already close the preset area because that's all the way I, or all the help that I would like to have from the software itself. And now I can definitely take it from here. Now, some people might say the colors are far too strong, but if you have a look at the zero exposure, so like a normal image that you would take with the camera, then if you look at the bottom, you can definitely see the colors already, right? So if we have a look and zoom in a little bit and go down, if I switch to the normal or the original version here, you can see the colors are definitely there. So I'm not, you know, making stuff up and even though I could, because why not? I'm really just enhancing the awesome yeah, landscape that was there already. It was really quite a stunning view, I must say, especially with a little bit of Salt Lake City back there and the sunset there and then these kind of weird clouds. Awesome. Now, the next step that happened that happened here in Aurora HDR, let's have a quick look if we hit the layer one button was absolutely nothing. So I did nothing with this layer. Uh, I must have clicked it by mistake, whatever. So let's have a look at the layer that actually does something. So layer two, and by the way, that's why I love this software because you can just layer and brush and everything. It's just great HDR software altogether. Now here we have a little bit darkened sky. So obviously there's a big difference between what it was before and what it is now with that layer, simply because I reduced the whites a lot, right? Just as you can see here, and also the highlights a little bit. So if I were to bring this back up to where it was before, you will kind of see the sky would become way brighter again. So I want to bring that down a little bit and also the highlights just cool them, cool them down just a little bit. They're just a bit too much for my taste. And apart from that, I also applied, because I only brushed it into the sky, some noise reduction. But in this case, the noise is so strong, especially on the top left right here. I can show you that when we zoom in here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. We go to the top left here, right? We have very strong noise. It's like barely, it's super patchy. So this is something I have to clean up in Photoshop because there are limits to what Aurora can do. Unfortunately, in this particular case, we've reached it. So let's zoom back out. Now that's all that happened in Aurora HDR. So again, as a reminder, we went from here, this kind of original image, or it's at least the zero exposure to here, which looks already quite amazing. So let's jump over to Photoshop, add a bit more light here in the sunset and create a like, like, like other words, create a nice dark vignette around the edges and then maybe just maybe add some light here to this particular mountainside because this is so super cool. Let's jump right over to Photoshop. Awesome, welcome to Photoshop and let's get this image cleaned up. Now, first thing, I wanna enhance the light here, right? So in the very back there is a sunset. I don't think it's very distinguished. So I'm gonna create a copy of my background layer, hitting Command or Control on the Windows computer and J for Jaguar. Now, once I have that, I wanna to go to Filter, Render, and now press your thumbs with me, Lighting Effects, perfect. Here I have the chance or the opportunity to take a light source and pop it somewhere on an image. So once it has loaded up, you will actually understand what I'm talking about if it does. And it does. Now from whatever previous image, there's a light source now over here. So you have this nice point light source, which you can adjust on the right hand side. And I'll just want to drop that towards the sunset right here, right? Just like somewhere around there. That's awesome. Now we could theoretically adjust the intensity, so bring it down a little bit, but I think something like 50 works actually quite nice for our image. Okay, let's do that. Let's hit the okay button and let's see how it sort of reflects from before and after, because I think it's gonna be quite nice. Okay, so here we go. If you look at the before, it's already nice. The after is for me way nicer because now we have a generally orange feeling in the image. And considering it's sunset and autumn, I, I kind of dig that. So I might as well keep it. But we do have to do one thing. We do have to now, now that we have added light in, we have to make sure that areas that are not facing the sun, right, that they are actually a bit darker because otherwise, otherwise it looks weird. So let's grab a curve adjustment layer and just bring it down. Bring it down to something like that maybe. I'm going to hit the command and or command or control I for invert. And now I'm going to use my particular brush to bring that into the image. So I'm just going to start by bringing it into the edges here with a nice opacity of whatever 20% or so. I'm going to bring the darkness just in ever so slightly. Something like this, just that it's a bit darker, but instead of making it completely dark and not visible anymore, I think this is already enough. And now we can brighten the middle area here. Okay, so let's grab another curve adjustment layer and increase the brightness this time. And not too much, maybe something like this. And again, hitting Command or Control I to hide that effect. And now bring it out where the mountain area is, just on this side here, just a little bit. Cool, now we have that. 
Awesome. Now, this is enough already for me for the lighting situation. So if we look at the beginning, right, it was relatively dull, but now the whole thing is already way more interesting and it has just again has a general better mood to the image itself. So I kind of really like that. That's kind of nice. We could maybe have made the light source a tad smaller, but yo, time to experiment, I guess. It's totally okay. Now, what I need to do, as I mentioned before, is I do need to reduce that noise. And there are so many ways in Photoshop to reduce noise. I like to be a lazy man. So I'm going to create what is called a stamp visible. So I'm just going to copy everything that is visible onto a new layer. For that, I'm going to hit Command or Control in the Windows computer, Alt, Shift, and E. So now you see I have a layer right here that is like a fresh layer. So for that, now go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. And I'm simply going to use the built-in noise reduction thing in Doodly in, no, in the Camera Raw Filter. So we're going to go to Detail. And now I'm going to concentrate first and foremost on the top left hand corner and I'm going to zoom in 100%. My rule of thumb is to make sure that noise is not too crazy at 100% zoom because my most, I mean at least mostly people are not going to zoom in any further anyway and it's quite enough. So I'm going to go for, oh it's going to be crazy, we're going to have to go crazy high. Let's bring down that detail and let's go even, let's, let's go all the way. Okay, that's now okay. Now let's also get some color noise reduction down. Now you'll see obviously it's going to take all the detail out in the image, right? There is now barely any detail left. So I just literally did that for this particular corner, okay? So if I hit okay now, I can then pop a layer mask on that invert the layer mask and I can now paint in wherever I want to have this crazy noise reduction to happen in my image. So this was a point, at least in the original image, where I definitely took some good a good while you know, uh, just to make sure I'm not going inside of these clouds and stuff. Because what I did then is I just applied a different noise reduction, one that is a little bit less strong, and I painted that one into the areas where the noise is just less strong, right? Something like the clouds and things like that. Now, just to speed things up, I'm just going to go a little bit, like just a tiny bit over the clouds just to take out the main stuff. But uh, of course, once you do it, make sure you do take your time and you're not actually taking too much stuff out of your, of your, of your sky. Otherwise, it looks a little bit weird. If you take all the detail out, it just looks a little bit, well, it's going to look fake, if you know what I mean, right? And that's something you want to avoid as best as possible. I said I'm doing a very fast job here now, but it's already way better than it was before, especially in the top left hand corner right here. So what I'll do now, just to maybe like take the attention away from that corner. I'm just going to simply darken it down. So let's grab another curve adjustment layer, something like that. And I'm going to darken it to something like this. I'm going to hit Command and I to invert. And with a nice large brush, I'm just going to paint it in to the corner section right there. Okay, just like that. Just making it dark, because why wouldn't we? Cool. Liking that. Uh, we could also make it a bit more dark maybe here. Just a little bit. Cool. Yeah, that looks really, really nice. If we felt like we could actually dodge and burn the clouds now to add some drama to it and things like that. But uh, I think overall the clouds are really nice and they look already quite dramatic. So I'm totally happy with this, especially this kind of red, super weird. Cool. Now, lastly, if I zoom into the bottom left corner, uh, yeah, I was standing on a path, obviously, so there is a branch. <laughs> That's super annoying. So let's get rid of this simply by creating our last stamp visible for the for the editing by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now I have all the information on a separate layer. And now let's zoom back out a bit. I can hit Control, uh, not Control, Command or Control T for the Transform tool. Okay, and now I can simply get my the little warp symbol on the top. I can now take the corner and drag it out of the image. Maybe something like. Uh, something like this. Once done, I'm going to hit the enter button. It's going to think for a second. And at least now we don't have that branch anymore in our image, which is really rather nice. Perfect. And within a couple of moments, we went from, let me get the original down here, here, which is still cool, right? But not as cool as this, which has a really nice golden feeling to it, a proper sunset with a city in front of it and some really awesome tr uh, colors in the, in the trees on the mountain. Of course, that's just my editing and it was very fast. Do feel free to take as much time as you need and to play with it as much as you can. This is your playground, use it wisely. And there we go, super fast editing, super simple, but a super beautiful resu result. In fact, it's so good from, at least that's what I think, that I just decided to have it as my background on my phone, because why not? Because we can. Um, enough self-praise. Remember, that was very fast what I did today, so do take your time when you do these kind of things. There is no need to rush like me because I'm normally not rushing either when I start editing the pictures the first time. So, but apart from that, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you do have any questions or any comments, pop them down in the video. In the video, no, rather pop them in the description, neither there 
in the comments of the video and I shall see you the next week or next week when I pump out at least one or two tutorials and uh, yeah just don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button and the notifications button and what other buttons do we have? Guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you the next time. Have a good one. Bye!